So Matthew 23 is a very, very important um, part of the Bible uh, that really would tell you exactly um, how Jesus uh, felt about, oh, uh, let's say the science, uh, the intellect, all your university professors, all your experts out of there in every profession, nursing, medicine, science, engineer, it doesn't matter, all the people with too many degrees, the overeducated fools, um, and then all of your churches or all the denominations, um, uh, in including in that in those denominations are your secret society, Jesuit, Freemasonry, skull and bones system, whatever it is, all in there. God would see them. Jesus would say, blind guides, you're hypocrites. Yes. He said this over and over again in Matthew 23. So then Jesus said to the, to the crowd and to his disciples, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their example, for they don't practice what they teach. They crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. Hmm. Could apply that to many areas, couldn't you? Could it, could, you could, couldn't you? I mean, t totally that would apply to all of the wealthy. World economic form alone. Everything they do is for show. On their arms, they wear extra wide prayer boxes with scriptures, scripture verses inside, and they wear robes with extra long tassels. And they love to sit at the head of the tables at the banquets and in the seats of honor in the synagogues. They love to receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi. Don't let anyone call you rabbi, for you have only one teacher. And all of you are equals as brothers and sisters. And don't address anyone here on earth as father, for the only God in heaven is your father. Oh, well, right there, the Catholic religion totally disgraces Jesus' word. How many fathers in the Catholic Church are there? Father this, Father Martin, Father O'Donnell, whatever it is. Hypocrites. And don't let anyone call you teacher, for you have only one teacher, the Messiah. The greatest among you must be a servant. Um, the intellectuals, well, actually all of the people that I mentioned, you know, in the beginning, uh, really should consider that. Let me say it again. The greatest among you must be servants. But those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law, you Pharisees, hypocrites? And hypocrites has an explanation point after it. For you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You won't go in yourselves, and you don't let others enter either. Think about that, because think about that in regards to all this secrecy stuff. Yeah. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law and Pharisees, you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cross land and sea to make one convert, and then you turn that person into twice the child of hell you yourselves are. Blind guides, what sorrow awaits you, for you say that it means nothing to swear by God's temple but that it is binding to swear by the gold in the temple. You blind fools, which is more important? The gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred. And you say that to swear by the altar is not binding, but to swear by the gifts on the altar is binding. How blind. For which is more important, the gift on the altar or the altar that makes the gift sacred? Again, could apply to all of the people that I've mentioned. Because Jesus isn't talking about an altar necessarily. He's talking about yourself and in relation to God. 
When you swear by the altar, you are swearing by it and by everything on it. And when you swear by the temple, you are swearing by it and by God who lives in it. And when you swear by heaven, you are swearing by the throne of God. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law and Pharisees, hypocrites? For you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore the most important aspects of law, justice, mercy, and faith. Again, could apply to all of the ones I mentioned. You should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. Blind guides. You strain your water so you won't accidentally swallow a gnat, but you end up swallowing a camel. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites? For you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, inside yourself. You're full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisees first wash the inside of the cup. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites? For you build tombs for the prophets your ancestors killed, and you decorate the monuments of the godly people your ancestors destroyed. Then you say, if we had lived in those days of our ancestors, we would have never have joined them in killing the prophets. But in saying that, you testify against yourself that you are indeed the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Go ahead and finish what your ancestors started. Snakes, sons of vipers, how will you escape the judgment of hell? Therefore, I am sending you prophets and wise men and teachers of religious law. But you will kill some by crucifixion and you will flog others with whips in your synagogues. Don't. It doesn't just mean synagogues. Jesus means just in general, chasing them from city to city. As a result, you will be held responsible for the murder of all godly people of all time, from the murder of righteous Abel to the murder of Zechariah, son of Berecha, whom you killed in the temple between the sanctuary and the altar. I tell you the truth, this judgment will fall on this very generation. So, yeah. I think that um, that's why I say I think if Jesus walked the earth now, uh, he would be some, saying something similar to that to all of the overeducated, to all of the university professors, to the universities. I think when he talked in the Bible, too, about every stone will be taken down, I, I think he would be doing that to every university for sure because of all their secrecy, secrecy and secret societies while they try to stand on his word like the Jesuits. Like they try to stand on some moral high ground when they have no moral compass whatsoever. Yeah, hypocrites. That's why Jesus mentioned the word hypocrite so many times. So to the science, to the technology that wants to, that's building AI or AI is built. That some people who I think are Jesuits um, seem to think that there's a way we can incorporate AI into. No, there's not. No, there's not. Because it matters who's behind it, right? And look at how bad we managed to uh, have leaders of this country. And the, the AI, who's going to manage that? The UN, the World Economic Forum, all the commies and the universities. All these people that are overeducated. Then because they had no moral compass, they became so stupid. So stupid that they got on board and became a globalist. Damning themselves. They're damning themselves. Because communism is a satanic, it's a religion, communism. And globalism is communism on a global level. These people have damned themselves. So when I say they need to repent, they should really take all of their degrees, rip them up, shred them, throw them in the garbage. Because if Jesus were here today, strike me down, Lord, if I'm wrong. That's what he would be telling all of them is you are all hypocrites and you're all blind guides.